exercise. The love that I have for fitness doesn't come from the actual workouts themselves. It comes from the effect that I get afterwards, the mental and physical benefits that you get from working out. Because whether you like it or not, your health and your fitness are your priorities. And they're not going to get any better by doing absolutely nothing or staying the same as you are now. I also learned during that time that if your health isn't a priority, it'll be another way for someone to make money. If you look at our medical system, they make the most money on the sickest people. And the sickest people are usually the ones that could have prevented it earlier on. The obesity rate in the U.S. has hit a new record. That's according to the nonprofit organization Trust for America's Health. A new report states the U.S. adult obesity rate now stands at 42.4%. That's the first time it's passed the 40% mark. The report found the rate of childhood obesity is also on the rise. The latest data shows 19.3% of those from two years to 19 years old are obese. Now, obviously, there's some things that just happen to us regardless of how healthy we are. Not my fault. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the millions of people who didn't prioritize their health early enough on that are now suffering the consequences of that. I've made a huge mistake. That's what motivates me. And I would argue that that's why it should be important to you too. All right, so now that we've talked about that, let's talk a little bit about what is that? What is the best kind of workout for you to do? If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that there are no best workouts. No, it's not what you want to hear. So that's the first place we'll start. The only workout that really matters at this stage in the game is the workout that you're most likely to do. So if your favorite thing is to walk, go for walk. If your favorite thing is to lift weights, start with lifting weights. The reason why this is the best approach to take is because you're not really focusing on the details of your workout. You're focusing on building momentum and reestablishing that habit and routine. So you want to do the thing that you're most likely going to stick with versus the thing that you're least likely to stick with. Now, if your goal is to build muscle, but your favorite thing isn't to lift weights, that's okay. We can start focusing on lifting weights later on once we've built the momentum, because you're certainly not going to build muscle running. But at the same time, if you love to run, it should be a part of your workout program. Once you've been doing that for about a month, then we can start focusing on dialing stuff in and adding more details to your program. And if you don't like fitness at all, tough shit. Next, well, you're going to have to just bite the bullet and do something. If that sounds like you, start with the easiest stuff like walks. Start with something like 15 minutes. At the end of the day, you're going to have to do something. Why do stuff you don't want to do? Now let's talk a little bit about how to work out with a super busy schedule. No matter what makes your schedule busy, all of us are dealing with a time crunch. And my least favorite excuse of all time is I don't have time. Oh really, because who does? Sometimes you have to make time. That's right, Nora, you have to make time. The easiest way to do this is by waking up early. And no, I don't care that you don't like that. Tough We're cutting out all the excuses and we're focusing on solutions. It's tough when you have kids, especially newborns. Trust me, I know. If you can't hear that, Nora just woke up. I didn't plan on cutting my workout short, but this is part of parenting. That's why you try to do it whenever you can and just accept the fact that you're not always gonna finish. <laughs> my daughter wakes up two to three times a night on average. That can't be my excuse because that's gonna happen for the next six months to a year. I just want to get some sleep. So the best thing I can do is find a solution instead of making up excuses. And my solution is caffeine. But on a serious note, the reality is, is that you're gonna have to wake up early or you're gonna have to do your workouts after work. And just from experience, you're less likely to do it after work than you are before work. Get down to the gym and work. Even if that means waking up early. But again, that's just a suggestion. You can do whatever the hell you want. Unfortunately, most of the advice out there about fitness and exercise routines is dog 
not because the programs or the exercises are bad, but because nobody talks about how you're supposed to do this for the long haul. For about five years, I worked in a gym where we would have these six week programs. And I can count on one hand out of all of the six week programs that I was a part of, how many people got to the end who did all six weeks. So I know what a bad workout program looks like. So here's what you really need to do if you wanna make fitness a part of your life and stop quitting halfway through. First tip, pick your favorite exercises. I don't care if it's push-ups, squats, or walking. Do those as consistently as you can, as long as it makes sense and it doesn't hurt your recovery. Second tip is focus on showing up, not being perfect. If you have a 30 minute workout plan and you could only get 10 minutes because something came up. Like the other day, I was doing a workout and I had to cut it short because my daughter woke up from her nap. Quite the workout. I was planning on her waking up about another half an hour later, but it didn't happen, so I cut my workout short. Now, I could have beat myself up about it, but the reality is, is that I got something in even if it wasn't perfect. That's what you need to do. No amount of effort is too small at this stage. And listen, life's gonna happen. It's never gonna be perfect. Things outside of your control are going to happen. The only thing you have control over is making it happen as often as possible and doing as much as you can. That's it. No amount of effort right now is too small. I promise you that. Once you've built up the momentum, the habit, and the routine, then you can start focusing on dialing things in, tying loose ends, and adding detail to your program that focuses specifically on your individual goals. All right, so to wrap things up, I wanna give you three of my favorite mindset strategies for staying consistent when it gets really hard. And these are by no means things that I've come up with. This is stuff that I've learned from other really great coaches and trainers over the years. The first one is any effort is beneficial. You're going to, along your journey, think that if you don't do everything perfectly, then you're not gonna reap the benefits. And that's not true. In fact, I would argue that it's really important to figure out what is the minimum that you can do to get the maximum results. That sounds simple enough. Go big or go home is a stupid strategy in this avenue because you're thinking about efficiency when it comes to your fitness. This is a marathon. You gotta find a pace that helps you beat your best time without burning you out before the race ends. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> and in order to do that, you have to discover what's the minimum that I can do because the minimum that I can do for a long period of time is gonna be the most beneficial for me. That was a lot of words. A lot of words. The second thing that can help you out is by realizing that it gets easier. The thing that you're experiencing now is the hardest part. It truly is. So if you can get through the hardest part and pace yourself to really trek that all the way through, you will eventually find a place where it's easier to cruise along and not feel like you're always fighting an uphill battle. The third one and the last tip I'm gonna give you is stop thinking, start doing. While I think it's good to have plans for how you work out and when you work out and how frequent you're gonna work out, you can very easily get paralyzed in all of the details. When really all you have to do is step outside your door and go for a run or go for a walk or hop on a treadmill or go to the gym or go in your garage or hell, drop what you're doing right now and start doing some body weight exercise. Sir, yes sir. 90% of all the clients I've ever coached were always thinking too much. Stop thinking, start doing. All right, that's all from me for this episode. Thank you a ton for watching this video today. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, I'm gonna put my Instagram link down below. You're more than welcome to come say hi, and I'd be happy to help you out any way that I can. All right, have a great day, and I will see you in a future episode.